Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to give you the ultimate quick guide to maintain your car so it lasts as long as possible. It's not as hard as you might think. A 26 year old Celica shows that. I do very little maintenance on it and it still starts like a charm. Now realize with modern cars, the electrical system is very important. You want to have a good battery and you want to make sure it's connected tightly. So every once in a while with some battery protection spray, just go to the battery. That was one of these battery cleaner tools that cost practically nothing. Clean the terminal, any corrosion. And here you can see there's bare metal. Clean that too. Then get a can of the spray. Spray it on the terminals. It keeps the acid from eating them. And in this case, it's bare metal. Spray it. Then it'll keep battery acid from eating it up. Batteries give off a little acid. Acid will eat up the metal. You get corrosion. Then it might not start the car or it might not charge right because the corrosion increases the resistance, makes it get hot, can short out stuff. Can of that spray, if you're not a mechanic like me and you only have your own cars, will last you a lifetime. Then of course comes changing your oil. If you do no other maintenance on your car, change your oil regularly. Go buy what the engine says, what the manufacturer tells you to use. In this case, 10W30 oil. And you can use any quality oil. Here in the United States they have the API service. That rates it. As long as it's the correct rating, it's perfectly fine. And regular oil, semi-synthetic oil, synthetic oil. And these old ones, you can pretty much pick what you want. But on the new ones, let's say it says you have to use a 0W10 oil. Well, you have to use synthetic, because synthetic's the only ones that can be rated at a zero in the beginning. So you have to use synthetic oil on the modern cars. And I've got whole videos on this, but basically, an old car like this is 26 years old. I use normal castrol, normal oil. I change it every 3,000 miles. With normal oil, you can change it every three to 5,000 miles. Regular driving, city driving compared with highway driving, all a mix of driving. And if you have a modern car that has to use synthetic oil, I still say change it every five to 7,000 miles. I don't believe in the 10,000 miles or that crazy mobile one 20,000 mile oil. You're pushing it too much if you try to change it that infrequently. Engine costs a lot of money to replace thousands and thousands of dollars. Just change it frequently. And if you don't drive much, change it once a year. Things build up in the oil, water, acids and stuff. And if you don't drive it much, it's still gonna go bad. Change it once a year then. Now the next thing is your coolant. This is a Xerox for Toyotas, for Asians. As it says here, it's good for five years or 150,000 miles. Some are even good for seven years or 175,000 miles. You don't have to change this stuff all that often. When I was a young mechanic, it was all green antifreeze. It was good for maybe three years. You had to change it a lot more often. You don't have to on your modern car. Check with your particular car, of course. You don't have to buy over expensive dealer fluid. The dealers don't make the fluid anywhere else. Somebody else makes it and then marks it for themselves. Toyota doesn't make coolant, either does Mercedes Benz. They just buy it from another company. So there's nothing wrong with using the Xerox in a Toyota. It's made for Toyotas and other Asian vehicles. You can pay a lot less for this than you will at the dealer, and it works perfectly fine. Just remember to do it when it's time. Maybe write it in a notebook. Put it on your phone. Put a date so you'll remember. Modern engines, yeah, they're made out of a lot of aluminum. People say, oh, well, Scotty, aluminum doesn't rust, so I don't care. Well, aluminum corrodes really badly as it ages if the anti-corrosion inhibitors in the coolant break down. So if you got to change it once every five years or 150,000 miles, no, big deal. Now, the next thing is... Your automatic transmission fluid. This is a dinosaur, it's 26 years old. It's a good idea to change the fluid. It's an easy job. This one's got a drain plug, you can just drain it. A few quarts come out, measure what came out, pour it back in. Easy job. But don't be fooled by more modern cars that don't even have a dipstick where they say, it's the lifetime fluid. You still have to change that fluid. That's a bunch of nonsense. As I've said many times, I've talked to the engineers where I said, what do you mean by this lifetime fluid? And they said, well, the fluid is good for the lifetime of the transmission. Then I said, well, what's the lifetime of the transmission? They say, well, the warranty goes out at 60,000 miles, then it's on you. Well, truth be told with any vehicle, <laughs> if you don't change it for the first 60,000 miles, it's probably still gonna work perfectly fine. But then when it gets older, maybe it has 100, 150,000 miles. If the transmission goes out and it costs 
cost you five, six, seven thousand dollars to replace it. You're gonna be mad you didn't spend a little bit of money and change the fluid every once in a while. And yes, the modern transmissions all use full synthetic fluid, which lasts longer. But me, I still change it every 60 to 80,000 miles. You can learn how to do it yourself. A lot of the processes, if you start from scratch, are very complicated. But almost all of them, you can drain out fluid to the drain, measure how much came out, you take the top bolt off, and you pump in the same amount that came out. And that's perfectly fine. Because in any transmission, sealed or not, gears wear. Metal stuff comes out. I have done late model cars that they say was a lifetime fluid and when I took the drain bolt out it was a magnetic drain bolt and they'd have little pieces of metal filings on them. Relatively normal if there's only a little bit but that stuff's in there. You want to drain it out every once in a while. Now the next maintenance is brake fluid. Now brake fluid is hygroscopic so what it does is it absorbs water vapor and that eventually will corrode the systems out. So it's a good idea to flush them out every once in a while but you want the real truth on that. That depends a lot upon the vehicle you're driving. Toyotas have pretty sealed systems there pretty well. This thing's 26 years old. You know how many times I've flush the brake fluid? Never. And it still stops good. It's got the original master cylinder, the original wheel cylinders. It's got the original calipers in the front. They don't leak. It stops perfectly fine because it's a Toyota. But let's say you bought a Chrysler. Well, then I made as well. My advice would be, ah, every four or five years you might want to flush the brake fluid out because they will get contaminated because they're not made as well. They're not sealed as well. And they will get problems from too much water getting in and then it corrodes the system and the master cylinder goes out. ABS system might even have a problem on it because that's got a lot of valves and stuff in it that can corrode. But let's say you're not a guy like me. You know, keep your cars for 10, 20, 30 years. Odds are, if you buy a car, you'll never even have to mess with the brake fluid because I've seen them go seven, eight years with no problems at all, never being flushed out and had no ancillary problems from corrosion in the system. If you're going to get rid of a car and not keep it for 10, 15, 20 years, a lot of times you don't do anything to the brake fluid. And the same advice goes for power steering fluid. If you don't drive your cars forever like me, odds are you can just leave that fluid alone. It does have a lot of pressure, sometimes over 1,500 pounds per square inch, but it takes a long time for it to get dirty. But if you keep them forever like me, every eight or nine years you might flush out the power steering fluid, put new fluid in so it doesn't corrode anything. Because at that high pressure, any dirt becomes like a cutting fluid. And since it's 1,500 PSI, it can eat the seals on your power steering rack, on the pump, cause the rubber hoses to corrode inside, and then squirt out, flush it out every eight years or so if you keep your cars forever. Now the next maintenance item is your tires. Just check the air pressure every once in a while when it's ice cold. It gets hot, they expand, it's physics, the pressure go up. Check them first thing in the morning. You don't want them overinflated or the middles will wear. And you don't want them underinflated or then the outsides will wear and your gas miles will go down because it'll have more friction on the ground and it'll wear everything else out and get worse gas mileage. And realize that tires have a limited lifespan. They dry rot from the ultraviolet rays of the sun. So check them every once in a while. All the tires on my cars, I end up throwing them away when they still got a ton of tread because they're dry rotted because we don't drive many miles. This thing last year, I think I drove it 500 miles. So if you don't drive much, over a certain period of years, you just check the tires. If they're starting to have cracks and stuff, then you think it's time to get new tires. So now you know some basic maintenance items that you can do to make your cars last as long as possible. You can have a car like mine that's 26 years old, still runs like a top. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.